to episode 80. 80. Oh, we didn't get the things out. What the, thing? the little noisemakers. Oh, yeah, where are they? Yours is destroyed. What? No, so mine's there's really, fine. There's no point. Bring it out. There's no point. Please bring it out. This is episode 80 of the All the Books show, the official podcast of the David A. Howe Public Library. Did you say episode 80? 80! Are you sure mine's the green one? Give the people what they want. Yeah, look at mine. It looks brand new right out of the package. Yours okay. looks like it's been pulled apart oh, by a boy. toddler. I should say it's a good thing uh, everything's working right because we didn't do a test. We sure didn't. But you sound great. Thank you. All right. You think you so, sound great, too. We're the official podcast of the David Hay Public Library. Yeah. We talk about book news, literary news, and author news. All sorts of stuff. I'm Eric Mickles. I'm Nick Gunning. Yeah. Today... It's another edition of All the Books Through the Ages. So we just Elton Phillips, bring us the time traveling book. Well, not right now. Set it down, though. Just guys, leave it with Roger. You're jumping the gun a little bit, please. So we're going to be talking about the 1980s, all things 80s. We're going to talk snap bracelets. We're going to talk Michael Jackson. Yeah. It, pretty much anything if that was in, anything, in the cafe 80s and right. Back to the Future Part Two. We're going okay. to talk about it. If there's any so. decade that doesn't get enough coverage, get enough commentary, we yeah. talked about. It's the 80s. I know. And it's never coming back. Yeah, Nobody's I don't ever get it. Interested. Uh, you uh, think that would be the right time. There's a bunch of stuff there that I think people today would be very nostalgic for. Yeah, Bring right. it back. You're right. So, All right. Well, before we talk about the 80s, because we're definitely going to do that. Is your window open? Yeah, it is. You want me to close it? it? No, it's just a little cool in here. Thank you. Nice. Uh, listeners, nice that breeze. is the sound of the local highway of yeah. Wellsville, New York. Industry. You can hear, you can hear <laughs> yeah, hard people. Sure can. Hard at work. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to talk about the Academy Awards real quick, because it happened last night. Unbeknownst to Warren Beatty at all. No, oh, just kidding. It's not Warren, Warren Beatty's Beatty. fault. I, as soon as it happened, I was like, that is not Warren Beatty's fault. No way. Yeah. It was so clear from what he was doing. You know, he yeah. was like, this is not right. This Look at this Faye Dunaway. And she was like, la, la, la. Yeah. It was unfortunate for everyone yeah. involved, I think, right. is, is what happened. But here are our top winners. Do you want to do it? You got it? Nah, all right. I don't, I don't care. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's fine. So let's, let's start with uh best picture since we already sure. spoiled that all right uh best picture went to moonlight yeah not la la land as yeah. originally reported yeah. i can't imagine that's like a nightmare so this I is about nicholas cage more and Cher in their awkward love story yeah yeah snap out of it slap. yeah okay slap so moonlight so yeah. nicholas moonlight. cage and no, Cher. That, that's not what it's about at all and we we will have this soon in our collection is that right yeah it's in the mail right now okay hey, best I, actor yeah casey affleck for yeah. manchester by the sea yeah I'm okay uh, with that. Yeah. I good. thought he was good. Good for him to get over his past accusations. <laughs> yes. Uh, best actress, Emma Stone, La La Land. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Because she basically, I mean, I know it's her and uh, yeah. Ryan Gosling, but yeah. I'd say she's the one. I mean, she carries that film. Yeah. Well, so. I said off mic that I would have preferred Ooh. to have given it to her for Birdman because I thought she was so great in Birdman. I can't remember who won that year. Wasn't it Kate Blanchett? I don't remember who won that Carol? year either. But I, I, I guess the thing with La La Land is, I mean, Emma Stone is is charming and everybody likes her and she was just kind of doing her emma stone thing which is great yeah. but i thought with birdman she was you know playing no, like she a had really that very song. different character she had that solo so. song about what it's like to be a dreamer she did so. she had a solo song <laughs> uh best director damien Ch- how do you say this chazelle for la la land good job man uh best supporting actress viola davis for fences which i have not seen uh, of course, based on the the classic August Wilson play, yeah. I really want to see this movie. Yeah, well, and I hate that we can't see it yeah, before it the Oscars the, unless you happen to the DVD to doesn't be in come the right place. T- I know where we live. We'll yeah. have to go like two hours away to see any movie that's not, you know. Yeah, it's true. Movie. It's true. Uh, Ma- oh boy, what? I should have paid attention because Jimmy Kimmel said this a thousand times. Yeah, Mahershala Ali for yeah. Moonlight. Yeah, he's I've from, seen him in a lot of stuff. He's I, he's I enjoy in Luke Cage. Him. He's very good. Oh, okay. So. He plays Cottonmouth. Best animated feature went to Zootopia. I wasn't sure how that was going to go. Zootopia is fine. I like Zootopia. Everybody yeah. likes Zootopia. You know, but it didn't change the political climate at all. Yeah. So. Uh, best original screenplay, Manchester by the Sea. Did you say best actor yet? Yeah, Casey Affleck. You had your did whole you thing. Did you say best supporting actor? Yeah, that's what we, that's that. what we literally were just talking about. Okay. Just as you were saying that. <laughs> oh, that's geez, what we just were, had a Warren Beatty That's moment. what we were talking about. <laughs> it wasn't I? Warren Beatty's fault. <laughs> He's an American treasure. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> anyway. Bonnie, Bonnie, where are you? Uh, so, the Academy Awards. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to list all the movies. Tell me if you've seen them or not. Ready? Okay, yep. Manchester by the Sea. Yes, I did. Lion. No. La La Land. Yes. Hidden Figures. No. Hell or High Water. Yes. Hacksaw Ridge. No. Fences. No. Arrival. <laughs> yes. Moonlight. No. Well, we've learned a lot about you today, half Nick. Half and half. So. Yeah. I think the only yeah you saw uh, one I didn't see. I saw Twentieth Century Women, which was up for best screenplay, but it didn't oh, didn't didn't take it. If you're good, so 
All know, right. it was good though yeah. on that Benny. Yeah. yeah, we just ordered our copy of Moonlight, uh, and then Lion and Hidden Figures don't come out until April. This on is DVD. crazy to me. I don't know why. So, I mean, if, I don't know why they don't capitalize on the yeah. big Oscar buzz. So you know, yeah. I had no idea what Lion was about. But now no, I do. No, I, I looked mean, it up. I, I looked it up. I never saw any previews. The first time I heard of it was when it was like yeah. up. So yeah, okay. My our our friend Sally suggested like, why isn't there a subscription service that you can yeah. just like yeah. subscribe to for a month before? Yeah, um, the see Hugos. All the movies. Well, the Hugos are yes, a public. Exactly. They're a public um, award. Yeah. So, but when you uh, when you pay a membership fee, mm-hmm. you also get they give you a digital copy. And it's one like one file you download it and it's all the it's different mm-hmm. folders and stuff. Uh, they give you digital copies of all the books, yeah. like everything. They give yeah. you all the ones that are up for best novel, all the short stories, all like they give you uh, single issues of the magazines that are up. It's really helpful, especially with the short stories. It's really worth it for that. Uh, so yeah, you're right, uh, Sally, who was on uh, our Halloween, Halloween episode, Halloween, yeah. um, suggests. They have the same thing. You pay a certain price, and you are able to watch all ten or whatever movies. Yeah. Uh, download. Like, I mean, that's digital. A, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention. This, I think it was one of your favorite movies that took home uh, an Academy Award. You know where I'm going? Don't do this, Eric. Don't do this, Eric. To me. Nick. Uh, all right, go ahead. I'll play one of my favorite movies of 2016. Yeah, one. Oh, Civil War. Captain America: Civil War. No. The Jungle Book. No. Uh, no. Uh, well, boy, what else did I like? I like Doctor Strange. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I really no. liked, I, I did like Manchester by the Sea, but you can't be talking about that. No, no, no. I won other awards. No. Uh, no. Okay, go ahead. Magnificent Seven. Suicide Squad. Oh, One Nick, for best you makeup. you tricked me. I know. Best makeup. I have to believe. Beating out Star Trek Beyond? Yeah. Come on. I have to believe that there was better makeup in all of 2016 than just somebody going, if we write damaged on his forehead, yeah. people will know he's psychotic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there. You just, yeah. you just know. You just know by yeah. seeing. So that's great. <laughs> All right. Any final thoughts on the Academy Awards before we move it on? No, but I can't wait to see what won in the 80s. Ooh, yeah, yeah. that's right. We'll have a little throwback. Did you ever watch... Uh, my- I'm, I'm just going to ask you now. Did you ever watch those okay. uh, I Love the Whatever on yes, VH1? Yes, on VH1, sure. I watched the I Love the the first I Love the 80s yeah. one. Uh, it was like a marathon. I, I've never watched one of these on purpose. Yeah. It's mostly like oh. I'm in a laundromat. Okay. I need something to do. Uh, to sh- I yeah. always get sucked in. I was like a lazy 15-year-old, I think, when the first one came out. Or lazy, yeah. however age. One I remember, of these days, you're going to break that. I right. remember watching the marathon of I Love the 80s, like start from finish wow. in one day. Mm-hmm. I while Love my the mom, 81. While my mom was cleaning the house. Mm. <laughs> and I... I can tell you, I did not help clean that mm-hmm, house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I feel bad now, thinking yeah. back, yeah. back on it. My mom probably could have used a hand. Probably. I probably could have used uh, the walk around the house. She probably could have. Some stuff. So. Well, let's talk about Bookmark. <laughs> okay. We watch a lot of movies. But what are we even reading? Yeah. Should we talk about Manchester by the Sea? If you'd like. It's sad, everybody. Yeah, it is sad. But it didn't make me sad. No. Because I'm a heartless it's a monster. Very, I think it's a very realistic portrayal yes. of everything that happens yeah. in that movie. It's really... Yeah. You know, it's just like you're some creepy monster who can watch yeah. things in real people's lives. That's what it was yeah. like. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I watched uh, Arrival and Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. Both good films. I really enjoyed Hail or High Water, which I just uh, saw this weekend. All so. right. Well, what did we read then? Yep. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, me? <gasps> sure. Me? Okay. No, let's Here, throw it let's, I'll, I'll do it. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. You know, I'm just going to do it. Okay. I read a slew of graphic novels, so I'll go through those quickly. A slew? Star Trek Volume 9. <laughs> Somebody's got to be series. reading all these. I'm telling you, I love this series. This had Q? Yeah, it had Q. And you love... Yeah. You, no, actually, I don't know your stances on the Star Trek character Q. I like Q. I'm not like, great, Q, but, you know. I look I forward Q. to the... My wife hates Q. Okay. I think if you're a casual Star Trek fan and just sometime you think like, oh, yeah, I should read one of those. They're quick. They're fun. Yeah. They're very good. So check them out. Yeah. Uh, Wait, I read, you think there are casual Star Trek fans that are then going to be picking up the IDW... Star Trek comic books? Yeah, maybe. Oh, they're very approachable. It's not like, you know, they're all standalone. You can just, like, pick them up and read a story. It doesn't matter if you're reading Volume 3 or Volume 1. It doesn't matter. Hmm. So, yeah, I think it's a good, good series. Good point, man. I read an older uh, Return to Krypton arc by Jeff... Not Jeff Johns. Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb. Back in the day. And 90s, then I read right? Old Man Logan, Volume 1, Berserker. So I read the miniseries. I read the little, like, issue zero. So now this is just the main series. Yeah. So... I don't know what, if anything, the new Logan movie is going to take from this series. It's not really going to do much with it, would you say? No, not this stuff. Yeah. If maybe a little bit from the 
the mini, uh, the main yeah. series, Old Man Logan. But I don't think I think Logan's kind of just like they they took the idea of like Logan old. Yeah. Uh, title only. Yeah. <laughs> and That's how they used to adapt the James Bond books. They're like, Spy Who Loved Me. We can come up with something like that. Yeah, sure. Don't even read the book. Well, what about, what, why don't we just adapt nope. the, There's a whole story here. <laughs> yeah. Filmable. Uh, I, I finished the Pelican Brief for the Page Turners Book Club. And? I uh, oh. I don't want to. You're, you're going to have to go back and listen to the episode where we talk about John Grisham to believe that I actually like John this Grisham. This is the sad song is, of a disheartened Gr- Grisham I fan. It started really good. It started yeah. really good. I think the real weaknesses are, I mean, spoiler alert for the book club, Uh huh. I think the real weaknesses are that there's little to no character development. Ooh. There's a, you there's, do love your character development. I do. Well, it's just, you know, this this young law student, um, she writes this brief that sort of exposes something. And then basically she's on the run. And the whole thing is like her getting on the run, getting the information to the right hands. And you just never get anything about who she is or what her deal is. She's just kind of a, a real flat, one-dimensional character in, in the... And the urgency of the book really relies on you being like, go, Darby, go, if you don't care. <laughs> go, Darby. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just me in hindsight, because I know at the time yeah. it was a huge hit. I haven't seen the movie. But Sorry, man. It was enjoyable enough. Like, I would take this over the last three that I read, because, you know, not a yeah. fan. Uh, so, anyway, I read Pelican Brief. So, now that's freed me up to go back to what I was reading before, uh, Back Blast by Mark Greeny. So, I'm really Back enjoying Blast. that series. This is the last time. Wait, are you not done with this? No, I'm not done. So, save it. Yep. Uh, save it. Because backblast is also what you would call a fart. I, yes, thank you. I was <laughs> desperately hoping I wouldn't have to hear it. 80s episodes in, all class, yeah. all the time. Sensation Comics Wonder Woman Volume 2 yeah. I picked up. Volume 1 is one of our highest circulating graphics for whatever yeah. reason. So. That's because of all the magic that she does. Check it out, Volume 2. She can yeah. change a hawk into a dove. Wow. Stop a war with love. No. In the old red, white, and blue. Wow. Uh, bum, 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 bum. I also started <laughs> The Nest by Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. Funny story. <laughs> okay, here we go. Classic <laughs> Nick. Yeah, it is. It's really good. We've been talking about this book for so long because it was on the uh, New York Times bestseller. New York Times bestseller. Yes. So I never saw it in print. I just sort of like, you know, so I've been saying Diaprix, you know, because I never saw how it was uh-huh. spelled. And then in the uh, book club, I said that, and one of the book club regulars was like, it's French. It's Dupree. And I was like, Whatever. <laughs> Oh, but so the only reason you say be- Diaprix is because that's how I said it when I read it on the New York Times that, bestsellers I just, list. I was aware of it long before I saw it, mm. is the thing. So I never thought, so like, what oh, is this it? is French. Dupree. Dupree, Sweeney. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I've sounded like an idiot. Way that less, was on the New York Times bestsellers list for a long time for me to sound like bad. Way less interesting. Oh, boy. So anyway, I am enjoying it. And so did Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler is the, the one who wrote the blurb for the yeah. book jacket. Maybe, she, maybe she's hoping so it will be turned funny. into a movie and she can be in it. Starring Amy Poehler. Yeah. Wow, but not Tina Fey, because they don't, they don't make good movies together. I didn't Sad see but true. Sisters. Not good. Really? Yeah. Baby's Mama. No. Oh. Not good. But they're funny together. I know. I yeah. Just not in, not in movies, apparently. Yeah. So, did, anyway. did they ever have any... I think Tina Fey left SNL like right before Amy Poehler started really That's probably becoming true. a big cast yeah. member. So they didn't... They, they had crossover. Then they, then they sort of like got it again when uh, Tina Fey came back to play Sarah Palin. Yeah. So wait, it's Palin? I've been saying Palin. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no. What have you been reading? Uh, so I'm reading uh, on our. Oh, you know what? I don't think I really mentioned it. Okay. Uh, our last episode, we talked about graphic novels mm-hmm. um, for those who don't like superheroes and whatnot. And I did I mention Queen and Country? I don't remember. I've seen that you're reading it, so I yeah. It's Queen and Country is a comic, uh, black and white. It's about uh, the British. Uh, Foreign secret service. Okay. Uh, secret, pol- I don't know how to call them. They're, what's, who, it's not CIA. Like MI6? Right? Are you it's, talking MI6? It's like MI6, except they deal with foreign affairs more than oh. uh, in-home oh, I see. issues. Well, then I don't know. Um, so that's what it's about. It's just about the characters in there. It's really good. They're, and I ended up getting like the definitive edition from one of the libraries here. And so there's like three graphic novels in there. So I've been reading. So you wanted that. something that we didn't have, but any library in the system can have it, and you can just get it yeah. instantly. Yeah. What an amazing service. Yeah. All I needed was a library card, and get this. That's true. That library card, free. Stop it. Yeah. That can't be true. It's true. It is true. Yep. Books, DVDs, CDs, any that you want. Yeah. For free. If I wanted, I could also get a book digitally. Really? Yeah. I could just download an ebook on a Kindle I already own with just my library card. Really? That's true. This is. Uh, how have I not heard of this? Well, you've been what living in uh, 
the uh, is that what we do here? Because I've been I've yeah. been playing things wrong. Yeah. Huh. So well, okay, yeah. okay. Anyway, <laughs> Queen and Country, Queen yeah. and Country, Queen and Country. It's yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Greg Rucka, he wrote some Wolverine comics a while back. Yeah. Uh, and did some other stuff. He's back on Wonder Woman right now. Yeah, he's written some Wonder Woman before. He's yeah. So I, I think this is like his big main solo like. Uh, set himself. in Maine. Is it? Yeah, it's set in Maine. Good. But it's a British. It's a, the story about the, yeah. the British service, but it's yeah, set expats, in Maine. Expat. So sure. I also started reading Blood Red Snow White by Marcus Sedgwick. Mm. Can't tell you what it's about because it seems like a poem just put down in prose. Mm. So okay, that's that's what I've got going. That's on. great. I yeah. love it. Oh boy. Oh, that's just that's a very small truck passing us by. Yeah, small I don't think they can hear it, but now now it's like they're here with us. <laughs> okay. So so yeah, that's all I've been reading. Uh, okay. I, I haven't finished those. So nice. I need a, I need like a book now that I finished those those two Michael Crichton books. Yeah. Dragon Teeth and Micro. I, yeah. I forgot. I got to go back into a world of non Michael Crichton. Yeah. You so. got you got to dig dig deep into the old stuff. Yeah, that's true. Jeffrey Lang. Yeah. No, Jeffrey Hudson. I can't remember. John Lang. John Lang. Jeffrey Hudson. Yeah. yeah. Those are his he did it. old pseudonyms. Yeah. Together right. we got through that. Yeah, we did, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, is that it for you? Yeah. All right. Well, let's look into the future. Let's talk advanced notices. Oh, okay. Right? Oh, yeah. I don't have like a crystal ball. If that's what you thought. Yeah, it's not going to be that kind of thing. All right. All right. So here's what I got for you. Okay. Uh oh boy. What? Fast and loose. So these are books that are coming out. What month? April. Ooh. Yep, coming out April 18th. New from Stone Barrington's author Stuart <laughs> Woods. Sure. Uh, he's returning to Stone Barrington. He'd done some, uh, he did a uh, Teddy Faye novel. He did a few other non-Stone Barringtons. Now he's back with Stone in book 41, Fast and Loose. In the latest thriller from number one New York Times bestselling author Stuart Wood, Stone Barrington's newest foe has a short fuse. And it's just been lit. All right. Listen, I'll <laughs> read a Stone Barrington book as long as Stone <laughs> Barrington <laughs> is any which way but loose. Oh. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this here's one that you might be interested in. Is this is this another classic Nick? No, this should is, I should I wind, wind myself up? It's an author that you like. Char- All right, characters you like. All right, here we go. You're probably anxious for this to come oh, out, boy. so that you what can really, it you know, uh, you just can like grab it and just yeah. sit back, and thumb through, Re- revisit sure. some old friends. Yeah. One of my uh, favorite sci-fi writers. Yep. Uh, yeah. K. Applegate's back with yeah. a new Animorph series. Anyway, uh, coming out April 11th. Oh, good. I don't have a long time to wait. Star Wars Thrawn by Timothy Zahn. Oh, okay. Was that- well, I guess okay. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. yeah. One you actually I like. I guess we, I shouldn't have built that up as yeah. a punchline coming. No. 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 Uh, that's that's uh, a good reminder that you always got to keep on your toes. That's true. Because maybe sometimes yeah. when I tell you you're going to love this book, yeah. maybe you're really going to love true. it. That's true. So this Thrawn is a character from the old uh, Star Wars Expanded Universe. He sure is, my friend. Who got kicked out because Disney bought Star Wars and said, that's all nonsense yeah. now. We're making yeah. our own stuff. But yeah. they brought him back in. Yeah, he's been on Rebels. So, yeah. and now he's getting his own book, Grand Admiral yeah. Thrawn. The, the Thrawn trilogy, I love it. Yeah. One of my favorite Star, Star Wars trilogies, you which we do have here. probably will not love this. You don't think? Well, I mean, I don't know. Okay. I mean, it's the same writer and everything, yeah. but I mean, I don't know. It's okay. not going to be the Thrawn trilogy. No, it won't. So. No, it won't. Good point. <laughs> All right. Uh, finally, from large print, we have, oh, now this is right up our alley, though. For library me? Lover's Mystery, number seven. Yeah, I do love so the library. So I don't know that you have to read the first six oh, to geez. get there, yeah. but Jen McKinley's Better Late Than Never, like a late book. Yeah, sure. You know. That's true. As a public service announcement, let me just say, it is better late than never. Yeah. I'm still holding out hope that somebody's going to return Superman Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, I, no, don't think I, it, I don't think I don't think it's gonna happen. But if it came, I would say mm-hmm. better late than never. We we finally reached the point where we have enough manga now that some of it is lost. Oh no! And that that bums me out on the level. And I would much rather come back. Yeah. Two months late. Yeah. A year late. Yeah. Than have to rebuy that manga. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Anyway, better late than never. And the latest <laughs> library lovers mystery from New York yeah. Times bestselling author of A Likely Story. Yeah. Because <laughs> 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 it's a book pun. A decades overdue book puts library director Lindsay Norris hot on the trail of a cold case. Huh. Colleague of mine. Yeah. So. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so that's coming to you in April in large print. All right. Sweet. But I can't wait that long, Eric. If only there was some way to find out what's coming out this very week. Nick, every every week I do this bookmark se- this uh, book news segment. Oh, I don't listen when you talk. Oh. <laughs> so right here, I've got a couple of books that are coming out. Yeah, I'm February fine. February twenty eighth. 
So these will be out Tuesday, February 28th, <laughs> That was me not listening to you. I know. Oh, okay. You just <laughs> didn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe you should look up your uh, your your stocks while I do this. Okay. Do you have stocks? Yeah. And what? Hey. Well, I don't want to talk to you about it. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, why wouldn't you tell me about your stocks? Now I'm kind of upset. Why wouldn't you tell me like... <laughs> you think I have a hot tip? Well, I, I don't know. It's just tell me what you're invested in. I bought Yahoo real early, back when it was relevant. Okay. Hung on to it too long. <laughs> sure. Now I'm a pauper. Uh, okay. So are most uh, yeah. Yahoo executives. I know. What do we do? <laughs> we'll work for... <laughs> Can't. <laughs> we'll work for e-commerce. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cravings. How I Conquered Food by Judy Collins. This is applicable because Nick is eating as we speak. So he obviously hasn't conquered food. Don't tell them that. Specifically Ritz crackers. Hey, you had to jump the gun so we could record. And I just had a little bit of lunch to finish up. I'm sorry. I'm a growing boy. I conquer food every day by devouring it. Half the time you don't even eat. Uh, I'm going to eat lunch when I get home today. You're like a junkie. Well, it will be dinner. I'm not a junkie. (laughs) I said like. I like junk food. Yeah. That's a problem. It is. All right. So this is a no-holds-barred account on f- folk legend Judy Collins' harrowing struggle with compulsive overeating and of the journey that led her to a solution. Hmm. So. You weren't prepared for that to get depressing, were you? No. It snuck up on not, you a yeah. little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like I, somebody told me Manchester by the Sea was a comedy. Yeah. Casey Affleck, he's hilarious yeah. in Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is going to be classic Bostonian <laughs> humor. The, the heck? <laughs> oh no but he, his marriage was it was going so well I'm not prepared for this <laughs> okay uh, this this is probably not the book to follow up uh, Conquering Food but Banana Cream Pie Murder wow a Hannah Swenson mystery with recipes you are so insensitive looks right like now. this is a situation where uh, food was the conqueror yeah the murderer yeah that's right <laughs> so this is Joanne Fluke okay she loves writing about food murders she does yeah and fans right. love it yeah if if I were to kill you, it would be like a uh, Scooby Doo fruit snack murder. No, I mean Ritz crackers. You could call it blame it on the Ritz. There we go. An Eric Michaels I meant, mystery. I meant in general. You you really like Scooby Doo fruit snacks. I just like the non Kellogg <laughs> brand fruit snacks. Okay. Sometimes it's Scooby Doo. Sometimes it's Ninja Turtles. Okay. But that's a little peek yeah. into my private. I, I life. do like blame it on the Ritz. As a title for your yeah, mystery thing, where you good. kill me? Yeah, it's yeah. great. What if it was just a like it was just a story of how I kill you and get away with it? But every book is in a different reality. So like mm. every every reality, this Eric is getting away with killing, killing you me. in a different way. Yeah, but it's all food related. That's weird that you have so many elaborate yeah. plots <laughs> already yeah. thought up. Stake a claim. I kill you with steak. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so good. Yeah. That is so good. Thank you. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. All right, bone box. A Decker. Where you put me in a bone box. Oh, that's right, great. Right, I put you in a bone box, yeah. Wow. That's universe B7. Okay. Uh, so, Bone Box, a Decker Lazarus novel by Faye Kellerman. You, now, you've read Faye Kellerman. You don't like it. What was the last one? No, Faye I haven't Ke- read Faye Kellerman. Who am I thinking of? I don't know. Slaughter. Karen Slaughter. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All the pretty girls. No thanks. Okay. Um, do you know Decker and Lazarus? Personally? Peter Decker? No. Uh, what about uh, Rena Lazarus? No, I've read okay. Ted Decker. Okay, have you ever watched the show Becker? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ted Danson, sure. <laughs> That's a pretty funny show, man. Oh, this is not fiction. Let's save it. Okay. Uh, Harmless Like You, Rowan Isario Bacanan. Huh. Written in startling, beautiful prose, Harmless Like You set across New York, Connecticut, and Berlin following Yuki Oyama, a Japanese girl fighting to make it as an artist, and Yuki's son, Jay, who, as an adult in the present day, is forced to confront his mother's abandonment of him when he was only two years old. Hmm. It's kind of a downer. Bringing, yeah, bringing it right down. Yeah. And I thought we were having a little too much fun there. Bring me back with that uh, banana cream pie murder okay, stuff. Okay, I'm having, <laughs> I'm having issues with this. The book is by uh, Jorkin Breck. Okay. I think it's Jorkin because it's J and then an O with a line through it. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, so Jorkin Breck... Uh, Police inspector Odd Singsaker has been captured in prison on an island up north coast of Norway. Mm-hmm. He wakes to find himself holding a shotgun. Next to him is a corpse. Okay. But what events led him to this point, and how did he get there? I don't know. The book is called The Fifth Element. <gasps> oh, no. I don't appreciate Mila that. Mila Jovovich? Unless is this, she there? Unless this is some way involved. Yeah, Bruce Willis, Mila Jovovich, and Chris Tucker having yeah. a fun adventure with Ann Holmes. Yeah. I'm, I don't care. Yeah, no, you're right. So, why would you call it that? How do you not know there's a movie called The Fifth Element? It was a long great. time ago, to be fair. I guess. Yeah. The 90s? 
Mm-hmm. So it was just quite a long fine. time. Fine. I have a book. Uh, I have a book I'm going to write about uh, a police captain. He's drunk. He's, okay. He gets kicked off the force. Uh-huh. But now a cold case that he had failed to solve is coming back to bite him in a personal sense. And he, wow. And so now he has to get back on the case. But nobody trusts him, and he's a disgraced cop. Right? I'm going to call it. Ready? Yeah. Star Wars. Huh. I, I don't. Uh, Came out in 1977. It's an old film. True. But, I, I mean, another one just kept. They come out every few days now. Oh, okay. So. All right. Well, how about um, uh, on, on a Golden Pond? That's a pretty popular uh, well, play, it came movie. Well, it came out a long time ago. It did, yes, it did. All right. I'll call it, uh, I'll call it Casablanca. After the town, no, huh? It's it's a it's a, an emotional title. Oh, yeah, I've decided now. I don't, I don't think any of this is there. A you good go. Idea. So actually, now I really want to read that book. Yeah, it sounded great. <laughs> yeah. I know I was all in. <laughs> yeah. Well, how does he solve? How James, did it affect James him at home? Paddington should be so lucky to have a book like that. No, James Paddington is busy. I know he is. All right. Well, his writing his slash co- his U, book U club is, is yeah. we're busy. Yeah, busy just translating. Long term project yeah, here. His with Eric. Dutch writing. Trying to so, make sense yeah. with a group yeah. of writing a, a, yeah. a mystery yeah. uh, in another language. It's, it's a long story. Yeah. Yeah. Go back and listen. To it, old, it's old rough old because episodes. now I have to take care of his service dog. Really? Yeah. He had a service dog. Then he found out it was a dog for, uh, to help the blind walk. Yes. yes. He doesn't need it. He, he, he doesn't? No. Oh. No. He thought it was a dog that was going like, to work on his car. Oh. It, it's not. So now no, I'm, now you need I'm, a mechanic yeah. dog for that. Yeah, so now I'm raising a service dog. Oh, that's it's hard because nice. i got to stay real busy. That's nice. Or uh, they lose all their training. Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, the Lost Book of the Grail. Let's find it. Grail. Okay. Grail? Grail. Grail. Yeah. Now, I've never had problems with this word in my life. <laughs> now, now I don't know. Is it Grail it's, or Grail? Uh, it's, you're saying the same thing twice. No, I'm saying Grail. No. Or Grail. I can't hear the difference. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is by... Charlie, love it. Love it or leave it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey. Uh, Charlie, love it makes me think of John, love it, which makes me John, love it. Love it, right? Lyle, love it. Country singer. Okay. Well, I don't know John why. John, love it. I thought of John, love it. I thought of is he dead? No, he's still alive. But then I thought I'm very much alive. Um, yeah. And then I thought we just lost Bill Paxton. Yeah. This week's week. That so. was startling. He was only 61. I know. Uh, died during surgery. Yeah. So, yeah. what's your favorite movie with Bill Paxton in it? Is it Twister? I think it is Twister. Yeah, okay. I would say Twister or Apollo 13. But there's a show you like. No, he's in... Well, he's, he was... I think they filmed just a couple... The first season, maybe, of Training Day. Oh, right. Four episodes have aired. Yeah. So, like, current, okay. current series. Yeah. yeah. He's in Aliens. He's in uh, the first Terminator. He's mm-hmm. one of the punks who picks on the naked Terminator. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. He's like, hey, where are your clothes, Terminator? Oh, my arm! Wow. You broke it in half with your machine man strength! Wow. Take my jacket! Mm. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the Lost Book of the Grail is, and I'll never know. Wow. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got some two nonfiction books. Uh, Dodge City, Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson, in the Wickedest Town in the American West by okay. Tom Calvin. Sounds fun. Yeah. I read about... I read that book called Doc. Yeah. So, uh... I read there was a lot about Dodge City. Dodge City, not in uh, Dragon Teeth. Wow. Interesting. But Wyatt Earp was. Yeah. Instead it was, uh, what did I say? Deadwood? I don't remember. Oh, Deadwood. Yeah, Deadwood, you did. Deadwood. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ripper, The Secret Life of Walter Sickert by Patricia Cornwell. This is nonfiction because this is her uh expose of one of the world's most chilling cases of serial murder in the police force that failed to solve it wow uh she has apparently patricia cornwall has apparently collected never before seen archival material including a rare mortuary photo personal correspondence and a will with a mysterious autopsy clause huh. and she has applied cutting edge forensic science to open an old crime wow. to new scrutiny now you don't care for anything jack the ripper you don't well, like Jack the Ripper stories. You don't like him showing up in books. I don't seek them out. Yeah. Like, I'm probably not going to watch the new Time After Time series. But I don't know. So, like, if I, wrote, if I wrote a book about Sherlock Holmes battling the case of Jack the Ripper, if only the to find the... out that he was Jack the Ripper all along. Then I would read that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like a good twist. <laughs> all right. Like the Oscars. Like the end of the Oscars. Yeah, like sure. Yeah. Oh, la, 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 one. Oh, yeah. no, it didn't. <laughs> yeah. What a twist. Like, yeah. Yeah. M. Night, that was M. Night Shyamalan just promoting split yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh all right and then i got he some tweet, y- did you see that he tweeted that yeah it was really funny yeah i got some young adult books you ready yeah lifeblood by gina showalter 
I said Show Walter. Yeah, we were all there. Show yeah. Walter. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm going to lie down now. Okay. This is a part of the Everlife series. We have Everlife book one. Okay. Uh, in the Young and Old book. So, Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Did we talk about this last time? I don't remember. Or is this just you and I? I don't know. All right. Stranger Than Fan Fiction by Chris Colfer. Yes, we talked about it. Okay. Yeah. He's from uh, Glee. 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 Mm-hmm. He, he's a, he looks like a small child. Yeah. So. I mean, he's a grown man, but... Well, he looks... He, he looks look, young. Yeah, he looks young. Okay. Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Then we got The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Mm-hmm. Uh, inspired by that about the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, and that's coming out, like I said, the 28th. Okay. And these are all books that we're getting as well. And then The Ship Beyond Time by Heidi Heilig. Uh, and this is the sequel to The Girl from Everywhere. Hmm. So all books that we are getting. Cool. Nick. Oh, no. What? I didn't have the New York Times bestsellers list open. Oh. Give me one That's second. Right. Vamp. Okay. Vamp. All right. I like the New York Times bestseller list because whenever I go into like a Barnes & Noble or a different store or something like that, I recognize all of the books because we talk about them all the time. Yeah. And I also think it's interesting when, when you know, some of these older authors who have like peaked long ago, I'm always like curious to see if they're actually going to like hit it, how long they're going to stay. You know, I'm st- I'm a little shocked that Grisham is still writing so high. Yeah. After so long, because I mean, this was like pre-Christmas. This was like what October? I mean, that's a, yeah. that's pretty good yeah. for this late in the career. Hmm. You know? Um, we never we never cover paperback nonfiction. True. But looking, I feel like we should talk talk about the first five. Sure. Real quick, it's Lion. Makes I sense. am not your Negro. Uh huh. Alexander Hamilton. Uh huh. The Zookeeper's Wife and Hidden Figures. Okay. All movies that are. Like, just, or Hamilton being, you know, yeah. based off Hamilton. Right. But uh, I'm Not Your Negro is also a documentary that was up for best documentary. Mm-hmm. Lion and Hidden Figures, both in the Academy race. And yeah. then Zookeeper's Wife is on its way into theaters. Yeah. So I guess the only way you're going to sell nonfiction is if it gets Movie adapted. Movie cover. And, yeah. <laughs> Movie it, cover version. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it felt like looking at that. Because the yeah. uh, Lion has Dave Patel on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> so... Makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense right now. All right. Let's see. Hardcover nonfiction. I'm ready. You ready? I guess I already asked you. Anything on the bottom list Nick will want to know about? It's so hard to tell his, his interests. Well, no. thanks for taking this time right <laughs> Okay. Now. Oh, Jody Picoult is not on the list. Oh, sorry. Sorry, man. That's I right. know you had some stuff ready. I did, yeah. Uh, so number 10 and number 9 uh, sold equally. Okay, good uh, for them. This, So we got right behind you. <gasps> yeah. Right behind you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, now I'm really gonna say the book's title. Okay. Uh, right behind you. No. <laughs> uh, rule of three. So scary. Uh, by Lisa Gardner. If you say rule of three, it blunts the impact. It blunts the impact. Okay. What if I named a book? The it rule? blunts the impact. Ah! <laughs> Very nice. Uh, number nine, the Underground Railroad. By Colson, Colson Whitehead. We finished our book club. Yeah. And. It was a great discussion. It was yeah, a very lively book. discussion. You had some very passionate, uh, this was the greatest book I've ever read, and a couple that were just like, didn't get it, didn't like yeah. it, didn't care to like it. Yeah. The fantasy elements of the books, uh, I think, are the most interesting to, in the discussion. Sure. Because, you know, it's the literal Underground Railroad. But it's not just that. It's just yeah. some things about the world that are what's, vaguely fantastic. What's funny to me about a man, like somebody writing uh-huh. the Underground Railroad, but saying, like, what if it was a real railroad? Yeah. It's... That's what I thought it was as a kid. Yeah. Like, every kid, when they hear the Underground Railroad for the first time, I I feel like it takes them a while to realize it's not a real railroad. Yeah. That it's just people yeah, hiding. I'm sure that I'm sure that was an influence. I'm, I'm sure that was in the back yeah. of his mind. So, <laughs> but anyway, it was a very good, yeah. very good discussion. Full yeah. group. So now yeah. we're doing the nest next. The day uh, they turn the Underground Railroad into a movie, uh huh, it will be right back. Yeah. So that's right. Uh, they'll probably wait until it stops selling so many books. Probably. So, uh, number eight. I mean, twenty-eight weeks. That's a lot of copies. That's yeah. a lot of people picking up the book for the first time. Did it drop and come back? I feel like yeah. it rebounded. Yeah, but then it won the National Book Award. Yeah. So number eight, The Girl Before by J. P. Delaney. Uh, this is the sadistic architect. Yes. He builds a modern house. <laughs> yeah. This hallway goes nowhere. <laughs> it will drive them insane. <laughs> but why? I'm a young female inhabitant. <laughs> Are you trying to control me? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna right buy the place. angle here. <laughs> <laughs> curving stairwell. Where I'm does gonna... it go? Where does the curving staircase go? I'm going, I'm going to go look at a different apartment now. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> And scene. Scene. Um, 
I was thinking right about the Underground Railroad as well. It's not just the okay. National Book Award. I Getting mean, serious. if you read any, you know, if you're reading any website and they do like a best book yeah. of the year, well, it won the Goodreads 10. Choice Awards, right. too, remember? So, yeah. I mean, it's not just like the prestigious, prestigious yeah. uh, awards. It's, it's it's got word of mouth like crazy right now. Right, it does. So, I haven't seen our copy. I ordered I ordered a large print copy yeah. and a second copy yeah. just because yeah. well, and it's system wide. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it's one of the books that's like, you know, it's not it's not an instant bestseller. A lot of the smaller libraries don't buy that kind of thing. They right. just kind of take a wait and see mm-hmm. approach. So uh, originally, we were one of the you know maybe there was ten of us who had it, and then like everyone wanted yeah. to read it. So yep. a lot of the different libraries got multiple yeah. copies of it. All right, so we got the Whistler, John Grisham at number seven. You were just talking about God this. God bless. Yeah. I mean, good for him. Uh, number six, two by two, Nicholas Sparks. Nicky Sparks. Twenty weeks on the list. I didn't know a Nicholas Sparks book could last this long. Yeah. I thought it was like, you know, and we're even past Valentine's right. Day, so who knows? I thought Nicholas Sparks debuted at number one. Yeah. Went down to like eight or something the second like, week. Like you, Mary Higgins Clark. Right, and yeah. then was gone. I know. No. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. Have we not been doing this since there was a Nicholas Sparks book? Maybe not. Whew. Uh, Never Never by James Patterson and Candace Fox. Uh, number yes. five. Yes. Number four. My wife wants to read this series. This is the one that started with a bookshop, Black and Blue. All right. It's gone for yeah. this. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, number four uh, has sold as much as number three. We got two of those on this week. Gemini. Uh, number four, new this week, Heartbreak Hotel. Well, by... since my baby left me, blah, blah. I don't get it. I found a new place to it. It's a Heartbreak Hotel song by uh, Elvis Presley. Oh, okay. Uh, Heartbreak Hotel. He did the Lilo and Stitch soundtrack. If that, oh, I remember if that. that. Helps yeah, you. that yeah. was great. Good. Uh, you baby, kiss me now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, got, I unintentionally got a very melancholy Elvis CD the other day. Ooh. I went to, I had to go to Olean because we, we received the Cattaraugus County Arts Council yeah. grant. So. Hooray for us. We're very excited about it, so thank you. But the award ceremony was in Olean, and I stopped at Walmart, and I was like, I'm going to get a CD. Uh-huh. And I got Elvis way down in the jungle room. It's uh-huh. like a late 70s recording. Not a happy yeah. man. Is so he- I got home and was just like, yeah. oh. Is y'all like, the pizza box is mainly crust right now. <laughs> I should have ate the crust earlier. No, it's not that overt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Made anyway, a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. Should have checked the uh, amount of peanut butter before. Fried peanut butter nano sandwich. I had a fried peanut butter sandwich, but I was on a nano. <laughs> well, Come on now. Just eating peanut butter with a spoon. I think I think I just have to accept that any Elvis impression that I start is going to end as Johnny end. Bravo. It's, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's going yeah. to happen. Come on, do that. the monkey with me. I know that. Man, I'm pretty. <laughs> um, so Heartbreak Hotel by Jonathan yeah. Kellerman. Yeah. It's the so it's new. This is a psych uh, psychologist, Alex Delaware. Yes. And the LAPD Lieutenant Milo Sturgis mm-hmm. investigate the mysterious death of an elderly woman. Miss, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did she have a tub mat? Because that could be. Oh, jeez. <laughs> dark. <laughs> Withdrawn. Very dark. <laughs> Withdrawn. Okay. Yeah. Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> jeez. Roger, I'm sorry. Um, hey, is that the when you bought that Elvis CD? We're never getting to the '80s. I know. <laughs> when you bought that uh, Elvis CD, is that the same time you bought me that uh, Roger Water CD? No, that was just at a thrift store. Oh, just cool. randomly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number three, Echoes in Death by J.D. Robb. Mm-hmm. Number two, two weeks on the list, Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. Mm-hmm. It's a retelling of North folklore. Still not entirely sure why it's counted as fiction and yeah. not non-fiction right but i guess i'll have to read it so probably a formatting thing <laughs> okay listen to mr publisher over well, here you know i mean it's like if you in if the you pocket write, of big norse mythology i guess <laughs> if you like there's there's novels out right now about alexander hamilton and just because they're talking about like a historical yeah. figure they're fiction hey, you know i think i've kind of moved on a little bit from hamilton well you've said you said the name alexander hamilton and yeah. i wasn't like we've been waiting in the wings for you I mean, you just... No, well, I was saying what I didn't do. Well, I'm excited about number one. Are you? On the list. Oh, yeah. We talked about is. this last week, and I brought it up, and you had no response. Okay. Well, then tell me. Hit me again. Okay. Lincoln and the Bardo. Yes. You know what, though? I forgot. <laughs> like, I, I described forgot what it. this is. I know you did. I know you did. I remember the cover so clearly. Uh, we talked about this in our well, best, uh, like, upcoming books of 2017, here, and I was very excited this, about it. 
uh, the summary on here does a much better job explaining yeah. what it's about than just the summary of the book. Right. Uh, visiting the grave of his recently deceased young son in 1862, Lincoln encounter- encounters a cemetery full of ghosts. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I read a review. Is this like a, like a Abraham Lincoln version of the shack? Maybe. Yes. Wow. I'm sure it wow. is. Yeah. Where were you, Lord? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then he hunts vampires. Yeah. So I read a review or, um, on the AV club talking about this book and the headline just read, uh, Lincoln and the Bardo or George Saunders new book will blow your, and they use the full word, effing mind. Wow. So I don't know. Okay. I don't Let's know. Do how, it. Yeah. <gasps> you want to read it? Book club together. Lincoln in the Bardo. Seriously. I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you want to do it? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, All let's right. do it. Let's do it and I'll talk about it. it. All right. All right. Maybe I'll download the ebook. Maybe you will. I like getting a. Wait, how much does that cost? Uh, a little bit more of the money. I thought it was free. Oh, yeah, if I get it through the library. Yeah. Sure, yeah. yes. Okay. Sorry, I meant. All right. Yeah. Great. All right, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Never mind. Uh, so, yeah, that's number one. Okay. So, is George Saunders like a. Uh, he's, he's more like a short stories and things. Okay. So. Well, it's impressive to top at number one. Yeah. So, got a lot of traction. Yeah. All right, man. He had a lot of buzz. A lot of yeah. buzz. Uh, okay, well, do you, do you hear any, anything? Huh, what, what is that, what's that sound? Is that a sweet train Oh, coming? hold on, what is hold it? on, hold on. Oh. I see what happened here. Oh, it's, boy. Uh, it's playing on you a, you gotta stop doing this. It's playing on a separate device right now. You have right to now. stop doing yes, this. Yes, I see. Uh, that can, who is ever, who is ever on the youth desk? Okay. Just got this blasted. Okay, That's hold on. Great. Let's, uh, let's. Wait, do I hear something? Yeah. What? The English version! Forget it. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. It's the 80s. We're I'm going sorry. 80s. Yeah, yeah, we're going 80s. All right. Gosh, All right. not only was it on the wrong machine, yeah. I had the English version. Yeah. Whatever! Oh, ridiculous. You want to explain what you tried to play? I just tried to play 99 Luff Balloon, so everybody knew that we were focusing on the 80s. Yeah. And instead... Yeah. <sighs> you know, to get you in the mood, why don't you pause your device, watch The Wedding Singer, and then just come back. Sure. All right? Okay. And pause. And we're Adam back. Sandler, boy. Yeah. What went wrong with Adam Sandler's career? A lot of choices. Too much freedom, I think. Maybe. He could just do whatever he wanted. He, he had a good stint in the uh, like the mid-2000s yeah. doing... Um, Rain uh, Over Me is one of my favorite movies. He's, huh. he's That's so not great. What I was, was going to say stuff like 50 First Dates, yeah. Anger Management, yeah. and even Click was doing pretty good. Yeah. I feel like he Click's had... Click's the beginning of the end, if I you feel ask like, me. But he was doing things that like... Yeah. were different than maybe what he had done earlier. Yeah. And now we're, it's just weird. And then he I just know. started doing crap like Jack and Jill. Yeah. Maybe, I would say uh, the Zohar might be. Oh, signed. don't mess with the Zohan. Yeah, yeah, Zohan. I think that was it. He yeah. also kind of looked like Bruce Springsteen in that. Yeah. What do you know? He should do a Bruce Springsteen. Adam Sandler, who coincidentally rose to prominence in the 1980s, which is what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. Well, his first movie was Going Overboard. Oh. Came out in 1989, but SNL and stuff. I mean, the late 80s were sure. you know his prime there. 80s SNL is pretty good. I mean, That's early, a good, yeah. like late 80s, early 90s yeah. SNL is pretty good. Dude, I just got to the season of Frasier, and they're like, it's 2001. I'm like, what? Yeah, I didn't even. It's weird. Yeah. So anyway, but still, it's a very long time ago. All right, so we're in the 80s. So yeah, because this is episode 80. Yeah, the let's decade. Dive in. So this this would cover the years uh, 1980. Yeah. Through 1989. Yes. For those wondering, yes, that includes 1986. Yeah. Nick, what year were you born? I was born in 1983, my good man. Oh, my, we finally got there. What year were you born? 1986. Huh. So, wow. I imagine we have some very wow. old... Wow, so you... See, I've lived in a world without Back to the Future. You've never had to bear yeah. that cross. I've never known a world without the Chicken McNugget. Really? Yeah. They, really? they premiered in like 1980-something, 1985, Yeah, I remember. I was... So excited. <laughs> Being like a one year old. Chicken nugget form. Yeah. yeah. And it was perfect. Perfect so, for my small uh, We have a baby lot hands. of uh, a lot of either old listeners who are like, they were born in when? Yeah. Or a lot of young listeners like, ha! They're tuning off. Yeah. yeah. No thanks, Grandpa. So well, here's the thing. Yes. You and I yeah. were born in the 80s. Thank you. But it's still not really my decade. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm four when the 80s end. Yeah. At the same time, 
Uh, I guess I remember a lot of like kid culture from the eighties, like yeah. the TV shows. Yeah, because you know. it would still be replaying. Yeah, but like the first movie I remember ever seeing in theaters was uh-huh. The Little Mermaid, mm-hmm. and that came out in nineteen eighty nine. Okay, or eighty eight. Yeah, either one of those years. Yeah. So like I was in company. Yeah. So I was I absorbing saw, pop culture. I saw Song of the South in theaters. Oh, geez. Song of the South, which you can't ever like Disney will never release for some right. reason. Right. They released it. So you saw that with Steve Bannon? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it oh. was a private screening yeah. at his that house. Yeah, very, really I good. apologize for that very political <laughs> comment I just made. No, I saw it with my grandma. Ooh. Yeah. I just learned uh, a little about your grandmother there. And, and it was just, uh, they just released it just for like, I don't know, a couple of weeks for whatever reason. And we huh. saw it. And then, you know, like you never yeah. see it again. But yeah, I think like the kid pop culture from the 80s, like I was a part of. Yeah. See, know, I never L-F-E-T. watched I never watched Transformers. I did. I never watched G.I. Joe. Yeah. Never watched Voltron or Thundercats. Oh, my gosh. Thundercats was like my thing. Okay. I love Thundercats. Oh, oh and He-Man. I never watched I had, He-Man. No, so those like five, those five animations that everybody's always like those are the 80s yeah. like i didn't but i was busy watching stuff like muppet babies yeah so. i watched thundercats like people watch like breaking bad the wire. or something yeah. yeah i was like what's gonna happen next <laughs> yeah. is lionel gonna lose his power yeah <laughs> so pretty is big skeletor deal. gonna get over his crack addiction yeah my my college roommate greg once met the voice of schnarf <laughs> and he was like yeah hi i'm the voice of schnarf and greg was like okay you know <laughs> but i mean i guess then you're not going to get recognized. So yeah. if you want people to know, you have to say it. Yeah. So good for him. Yeah, it's not It's not like if you're Stan Lee and you're just yeah. in the elevator and you're like, Excelsior, yeah. Yeah. please press number 28. Yeah. Going up. <laughs> to the moon. By the way, when I invented Spider-Man. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks, we've heard it. I thought, what if a man could crawl on walls? <laughs> well, let's check in with history.com to get a nice overview of the 1980s. Oh, wait. Uh, we're in the 80s. Blue, blue, blue. I don't know where mine is. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I don't know where it is. Did you forget what we were doing? Uh, yeah, no, I remember it. I just can't find it now. History.com has this to say of the 80s. For many people in the United States, the late 1970s were a troubled and troubling time. Yeah. The radical and countercultural movements of the 1960s and early 1970s, the Watergate scandal, the Vietnam War, uncertainty in the Middle East. What would that be like? Uncertainty, uncertainty in the Middle, Middle East. East. It's hard yeah. to even put yourself in that. Yeah. <sighs> Some of these are rough. Yeah. <laughs> Uncertainty in the Middle East and economic crisis at home. Yeah. That's it's like just learning. Unrelatable. That's like learning that uh, Dr. Watson and Sherlock and Holmes yeah. hurt his, got uh, injured while serving in Afghanistan. Yeah. You're like, well, surely they must have changed yeah. that. And no. No. True. True. Anyway. The uh, economic crisis at home had undermined Americans' confidence in their fellow citizens yeah. and in their government. By the end of Jimmy Carter's presidency, the idealistic dreams of the 1960s were worn down by inflation, foreign policy turmoil, and rising crime. You know what I think is going to solve it? Cocaine. They're going to (laughs) try. In response, many Americans embraced a new conservatism in social, economic, and political life during the 1980s, characterized by the policies of President Ronald Reagan. Often remembered for its materialism and consumerism, the decade also saw the rise of the yuppie, an explosion of blockbuster movies, and the emergence of cable networks like MTV, which introduced the music (laughs) video and launched the careers of many iconic artists. Name three. Madonna. Uh, MC Hammer. Sure. <laughs> okay. Actually, I think that might have been 90s. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, Devo. Who's to say, wow. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. Bon Jovi? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's stop. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, well, why don't we check in? Um, I don't know. Where do you want to go first, buddy? Let's look at prices for a minute here. Prices in the 80s? Yeah. We're going to sure. compare prices to the, what I have here is 1985 to 2012. So things have changed in the last five years, but there's where it would be. Medium household income in 1985, $23,618. In 2012, Fifty thousand and fifty four dollars. Minimum wage in nineteen eighty five, three thirty five. Ouch. Yeah. I made four more dollars than that when I was a janitor. Congratulations. Thanks, man. First class postage stamp, twenty cents. Uh, now well, I think it's forty seven now, right? Forty seven, forty eight. Gotta get, get this control. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gallon of regular gasoline, a dollar twenty in nineteen eighty five, three fifty in twenty twelve. So it's not that bad now. It's actually sort of gone back down. We're what, like two fifty now? I can't. Okay. I don't remember. All right, thank you. I haven't gotten gas in a while. I understand. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, I know. Movie tickets three fifty five in nineteen eighty five. Uh, eight, but they're more than eight dollars. Could you now. imagine they, how like, many nine? movie tickets we'd be buying yeah. if it was three fifty? I yes, I'd I can. spend my life in the theater. Average price of a house one hundred thousand uh, in two thousand twelve three hundred thousand. A dozen eggs eighty cents in nineteen eighty five. Go for some scrambled Two dollars. 
in 2012. Okay. okay. Don't have the price of mayonnaise. I'm sorry. Yeah. What about pumpkins? No, I don't have the pumpkin price. <laughs> okay. I don't have it. I don't have it. All right. Uh, well, let's let's dig into a couple of the uh, the best love books from the '80s. All right. Okay. So here's just a couple uh, that came out. Um, these these aren't bestsellers or anything. They're just sort of ones that stuck around. Uh, Alice Walker and the Color Purple, which actually is uh, sort of back in the limelight because it has a Broadway revival that just won a Grammy. Hmm. Uh, the Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Hey, and that's Bonfire about to show up on Hulu. That's right. As a series, yeah. I think. What do you know? Uh, Beloved by Toni Morrison. Nothing. That's got nothing on Hulu. <laughs> Stephen King's Misery. Uh, that might be on Hulu. It might. <laughs> Remains of the Day. Nope. The Joy Luck Club. Amy Tan. Okay. Uh, Pet Cemetery, Stephen King. This was a big, big year for Stephen King. Yeah, the 80s. So, yes. yeah, Roald Dahl's sure. Matilda. A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Probably going to show up on your list, I would uh, assume. Maybe, yeah. Stop spoiling it. Sorry. <laughs> so, a lot of different so things So, these are the here. most loved, you said? No, these are just, like, big books that, you know, are oh, yeah. still pretty recognizable yes. today. Uh, I have also the ones that won the Pulitzer Prize. Did you say the 80s were better for Stephen King than the 70s? Well, I guess the 70s, he's more like on the rise. He's like, you know, the new name to oh, watch sure. the big hits. Yeah. I think the 80s, he's like, he's like that's like Rocky right. II, Stephen King. This is, he's very settled into his fame right. and wealth. And this is post-Jurassic right. Park, Michael Crichton. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes, exactly. So um, I've got a lot of different things. You want, why don't you give us one? You know, let's talk. You want to do Academy Awards? I want to start with the Academy Awards. Let's do it. In the spirit. I'm with you. Of it. Yeah. What? Who could have timed our 80th episode with the Academy Awards? I, it's it's just beautiful. All right, so 1980. Tell me if you've seen these movies. Okay. 1980, the winner was Ordinary People. No. Me either. Uh, I don't see... Oh, Raging Bull is the one I would... I, I actually see. haven't seen that either. It's pretty good. Uh, I lost that. All right, 1981, Chariots of Fire. No, I haven't. Um, it beat out On Golden Pond, hey. the name of my new cop drama. Yeah. Um, I wonder if what, that's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. uh, up for best picture that year, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hmm. I, I feel like most uh, people giving out that would sooner uh, be put in front of a firing squad than give Raiders well, of the Lost I mean, Ark Raiders, best picture like today. At the time, oh, yeah, today certainly. Like if, yeah, at the time, I think it was pretty. It was unique. Yeah, it was something. I mean, they were clearly doing a, an homage, a throwback yeah. to the earlier times, and it's great yeah. acting. 1982, Gandhi. Nope. Directed by Richard Artenborough, who mm -hmm. plays John Hammond mm -hmm. in Jurassic Park, beat out E.T., the extraterrestrial, by Steven Spielberg. Wow. Uh, Spielberg cast Artenborough because of this, like, these two films going against each other. In fact, mm -hmm. when Artenborough won for Best Picture, he got up and said he thought E.T. should have won, that it was a uh, much better film. Interesting. Yeah. Very humble, John yeah, Hammond. I guess so. Uh, 1983, Terms of Endearment. Nope. Uh, let's see. Beat out the uh, the right stuff, the dresser, the big chill. Okay. Nine, boy, the 80s kind of stink for, for films. 1984. The right stuff? I haven't seen it. The big chill? I haven't seen it. Okay. <laughs> 1984. Amadeus. I, I have do seen like this. Amadeus. Yeah, I like that. So, uh, let's see. 1985. Out of Africa. Did you ever see that one? No. I, that's Robert Duvall? Robert Redford. Redford? And Meryl Streep. Streep? Right? I, I don't know. Stop. I'm sorry. I can't. All right. It. That beat out The Color Purple. Hey. Uh, by Steven Spielberg. Uh -huh. Spielberg's having a rough go. This is I guess three so. films now yeah. for Best Picture that he hasn't won. Not going to happen. Uh, beat out Witness as well. Oh, I haven't I seen Witness. Witness. Oh, boy. Would you give Witness Best Picture? It's very good. I don't know okay. if I jump right to Best Picture, but it is very well done. All right. 1986. Platoon. I haven't seen Platoon. Beat out Hannah and her sisters. I love Hannah and her sisters. Uh, so the Mission. Great, great Woody Allen. I think The Mission is supposed to be like one of the best films ever as well okay or at least has one of the best soundtracks ever uh beat out a room worth of review as well haven't seen 1987 the last emperor nope beat out moonstruck <laughs> and fatal attraction i've definitely seen moonstruck yeah i know yeah okay that's that seems kind of like a wacky movie for best picture yeah well share one for best actress yes wow yeah it was like a huge like what is happening <laughs> oh wait did she win for that or did she win for silkwood i can't remember okay go on uh, 1988, yeah. Rain Man. Yeah, I like Rain Man. Beat out, uh, Working Girl? Definitely, definitely beat out Working Girl. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's politically correct. For you. <laughs> I guess you're doing an impression of Dustin <laughs> yeah, Hoffman. Yeah, I'm doing Dustin Hoffman. All right, 1989. Jeez. Now, I know this is a, uh, I know people 
like today think of this as a mistake, but Driving Miss Daisy won for Best Picture in 1989. Huh. How do you feel about that? I haven't seen it. Really? Yeah. Beat out Field of Dreams yeah. and Dead Poets Society. Oh. And Born on the Fourth of July. You know, it was Moonstruck that she won an Academy Award for. Congrats. She's great in that, though. Okay. She's very understated. Yeah. Sorry. All right. You, you've seen Dead Poets Society. Yeah. Oh, Captain, lost, my captain. Lost Driving Miss Daisy. Must stand up on my desk. Uh, lost my Field of Dreams, which I haven't seen. Mm, I've seen Field of Dreams. You couldn't handle it. Yes, I could. No way. Yes, I could. No, you couldn't. Why? Because it deals with a, I can't a, tell you. a son trying to connect with his father through baseball? Yeah. What? Yeah. Ever. Okay. <laughs> I'm not getting into hey, this. don't cry. Here, right I, here. No, but... I'm not going <laughs> to. It's okay, because next year in 1990, Kevin Costner wins for Dances with Wolves. Anyways. Oh, okay. All right, good. So. When does he win for Waterworld? When is that? Uh, I don't think anyone wins for oh, Waterworld. Okay. All I right. I think uh, the water won okay. that year. Hmm. Interesting. We shall devour your set. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Well, let's talk bestsellers. All right. You got that up then? Yeah, I sure do. Okay. All right. So according to Publishers Weekly, here are the bestsellers. In 1980? 1980. 80s? Uh, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the top for each one. Okay. The Covenant by James Missioner. No. Uh, also in the list here, Born Identity, uh, Stephen King's Firestarter. Firestarter. 1981, Noble House by James Clavell. Also in here, Cujo by Stephen King, a Hotel New Hampshire by John Irving. So would you say uh, this is else? schlock, Stephen King? <laughs> I guess. Oh, 1982, no. E.T. the Extraterrestrial by William Kotzwinkel. Huh. Uh, yeah, who knows? Great. Uh, boy, this was a great Wait, year for Stephen King. Wait, is that like the novelization? It must be. That's crazy. Also here, uh, Different Seasons by Stephen King. Valley of Horses by Gene M. Ewell. Yeah. That's always a popular series. Yeah. Uh, big, big year for Robert Ludlum, too, it looks like. 1983, Return of the Jedi. So it was a big year for uh, yeah, novelizations, novelizations or, yeah. I guess, or a big decade, well, anyway. it was back when, if a movie Stephen was King in King has theaters. two here, too. Pet Cemetery and Christine in 1983, both of the top ten. That was back when, Sellers like, of the year. if a movie came out. Louis L'Amour, Lonesome Gods, wow. And you liked the movie. You either went to see the movie, yeah. or that was it. Yeah. And then you didn't see that movie right. for many years. Because like that was still the beginning of the vhs absolutely and so like but you remember how long it took people to put movies on vhs oh yeah not even just like the year after like jurassic park comes out in 93 yeah. you get it the summer of 94 yeah like we're talking like oh this old movie no yeah. we're not we're not bringing that to vhs anytime I, soon it was like a decade before i saw oliver and company yeah. again crazy yeah. and return the jedi like how long did that take oh i don't know yeah so uh, 1984 again. Stephen King top took the top slot for 1984 with yeah. the Talisman. Uh, this was co-written with Peter Straub. We're doing a Peter Straub book for a book club this uh, Halloween. Oh, nice Ghost story. plug. Thank you. Also, Robert Ludlum in here. The Sicilian by Mario Puzzo. So this is a. Um, I don't know why I said Puzzo, but uh, <laughs> the Sicilian is. Um, you know, in The Godfather, where Michael, they're like, get out of here. You got to get out of here. Go to Sicily for a while. Uh -huh. That's what the Sicilian is, ah. Michael and Sicily. So it's kind of a side story. Okay. Uh, Love and War by John Jakes, also in there. The Butter Battle Book by Dr. Seuss. Hey, all right. You love it. Sure Coming do. Coming up on Seuss's birthday, too. So Yeah, this ha week. Happy birthday. Uh, oh, Full Circle by Danielle Steele. Speaking of Full Circle, here we are Dan talking about Danielle, Danielle Steele, Steele again. in the 80s, yeah. This was her rise of prominence. 19... This was her bloody rise of prominence. <laughs> it's true. 1985, The Mammoth Hunters by Gene M. Arroyo. What was that? <laughs> Skeleton Crew by Stephen King. There he is again. Secrets by Danielle Steele. All these in the uh, yeah. family album by Danielle Steele. Yeah. All in the top ten. She starts. 1986, she stop. number one bestseller. You, you want to guess the author? Uh, Stephen King? Stephen King. It by Stephen King. Also, Red Storm Rising by Tom Clancy and Larry Bond. Born Supremacy by Robert Ludlum. Which I've never read. I love The Born Identity, but the sequels just don't interest me. He's talking about the books, though, not the movies like a normal person. True. Yeah, that's exactly true. 1987, care to guess the... Uh, Stephen King? Stephen King. Uh, the Tommyknockers by Stephen King. Second place, we have Patriot Games by Tom Clancy. Third place, Kaleidoscope by Daniel Steele. Fourth place, Misery by Stephen King. Jeez. Eighth place, Fine Things by Daniel Steele. Oh. Number 10, The Eyes of the Dragon by... Stephen King. Stephen King. Yeah. Uh, 1988, The Cardinal and the Kremlin. Do you think the by person Tom driving Clancy. the car that hit Stephen King that slowed down his writing process? Do you think that was like a rival publisher? It might. It was like, Peter Straub. We can't do this <laughs> like, anymore. We can't handle this. Too much. Too much content. Slow down. So for 1988, Cardinal and the Kremlin by Tom Clancy. Danielle Steele again coming to number three. Zoya by Jeez. Danielle Steele. Robert Ludlum as well. Icarus, Icarus Agenda by Robert Ludlum. Mm -hmm. uh, Alaska by James Missioner. 
Uh, we People got another. In the 80s were not diverse readers. I guess not. 1989, Clear and Present Danger by Tom Clancy. Uh, number two slot, The Dark Half by Stephen, Stephen King. King. Number three, Daddy by Stephen King. Daniel Steele. Oh my number gosh. four, Star by Stephen King. Daniel Steele. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, Satanic Verses by Selman Rushdie. Uh, Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. Whoa, oh, that's got, where it begins. I got bored saying that title. Yeah. Uh, While My Pretty One Sleeps by Mary Higgins Clark. So there she is, right. making it in. So that's the best sellers for the decade. All right. Newberry. What were the best kids' books? Hey, you tell me. In the 80s. No, really, tell well, me. Well, according to the Newberry Awards, which we have found to not really. No. Uh, don't pick, translate. Yeah, they don't <laughs> pick the ones that last the longest. But no. I think we, maybe we'll start seeing them in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, Gathering of Days, a New uh-huh. England Girls Journal. Huh. Did you read it? No. All right. Jacob Have I Loved by Katherine Patterson in 1981. Nope. Uh, but I, you, you've heard of that. I, no, I've never heard oh. of it. Oh. I've never heard of uh, it. 1982, A Visit to William Blake's Inn. Nope. All right. You know what? Here's, here's why we talk about the awards not meaning as much. It beat out Ramona Quimby, age eight. <laughs> Everybody knows Ramona Quimby. Yeah. All right. Uh, 1983, Dicey's Song. Nothing? Nope. All right. Uh, number 1984, Dear Mr. Henshaw by Beverly Clary. I love this book when I was a kid. I haven't read it. Oh, it's very good. Okay. Uh, number 1980, I keep saying number. 1985, yeah. Robin McKinley, The Hero and yeah. the Crown. Yep. Yeah. Not sure. Uh, 1986, Patricia McCullen, Sarah Plain and Tall. They did it right this time. Yeah. Along with Dear Mr. Henshaw. Uh-huh. Uh, beat out. I guess I didn't realize Sarah Plain and Tall was a children's book. Yeah, one what, Newberry. What do I know? Six. Okay. Uh, Beat Out Dog Song by Gary Polson. But Gary Polson is just getting started. He sure is. 1987, uh, The Whipping Boy. Uh, on My Honor. Beat Out On My Honor. I okay. feel like I read that one. Mm-hmm. In fact, I need to click on this Wikipedia hole right now. I'll say you do. All right. Uh, 1988. I know Nick has read this one. Lincoln, <laughs> A Photobiography. No, I haven't. He beat out Hatchet. I'm oh, sorry. People are still reading Hatchet. They Nobody's are. reading this Lincoln, That's A true. Photobiography. That's true. Uh, way to go, Newberry. Yeah, seriously. 1989, Joyful Noise. Poems for two voices. Yeah. No. All right, well, Newberry Awards don't know what they're doing, I, I guess. guess not. Uh, I on guess not. On My Honor. It's a short story. Uh, I was looking, I was using Goodreads to uh, find out what I've read from the 80s. And what it what it said to me was the 80s seemed to be sort of the start of the big, like, blockbuster not books? just movies, but books. Okay. So I've got the Hugo's. Uh, John, too, John Grisham's first book, uh, Time to Kill. So this is Pulitzer? In the 80s. Hit big. No, this is just things that I've read. Oh. But uh, Time to Kill, uh-huh. uh, Rules of Prey by John Sanford, uh-huh. still going strong, like yeah. just as popular. Neon Rain by James Lee Burke, slowing down a little bit, but still yeah. you know, top tier. Hunt for Red October, Tom Clancy, yeah. also in the 80s. Pet Cemetery by well, Stephen King. he was Reagan that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Reagan Nothing gave that more a shout I like out, to do than works. sit down with Tom Clancy and a big old bowl Absolutely. of jelly beans. Yeah, uh, Pet Cemetery. Of course, I read that. Yeah. Uh, all this Stephen King talk. Buried. You can go back and revisit episode nine if you want to hear us talk more about. It Stephen is King. episode nine. Jeez, Louise, yeah. so long ago. I know. Uh, Open season by Archer Mayer, friend yeah. of the library. Archer Mayer yeah. started back then. Born Identity, as I said, by Robert Ludlum's great yeah. things. Uh, three by Finney uh, came out with three lesser known Jack Finney. Books. Oh, I thought Three by Finney was a book that you read. It is. I mean, that's, oh. it's come. It went on as a collection with oh, okay. Woodrow Wilson Dime and The Night People and uh, Marion's Wall. Those were books that didn't really do much on their own. Okay, so they didn't really get much exposure until Three by Finney. So that kind of counts. Three by uh, and then of course Hatchet, as you just Hatchet. said. Hatchet. Hatchet came yeah. out. Uh, a couple of plays I like: Steel Magnolias, Crimes of the Heart. Oh, <gasps> Crimes of the Heart came out in the eighties. I know, I sure do. So. Anyway, that just made me think, like, all of these names starting yeah. in the 80s and then continuing. Yeah. I mean, not even Tom Clancy himself is continuing, but the Tom Clancy books yeah. continue. Yeah. So, I mean, this was a big a big swell of, Tommy? like, yeah. settle in, Tommy because C? for the next 30 years, these are going to yeah. be your books. You think so. You think it's with the books, like, they put out these Tom Clancy books. He He's also a huge name in video games. Yeah. He started with Rainbow Six. Yeah. And now they still make, you know, Tom Clan- Clancy's division Tom yeah. Cl- it's ridiculous I know. uh I know, all it's right crazy. hugo awards the best sci-fi slash fantasy sometimes I'm ready of the 80s let's see what nick has read okay no just kidding let's see what i've read yeah uh 1980 arthur c clark uh for the fountains of paradise i haven't read this sorry uh 1981 joan d uh joanne d ving one for the Snow Queen. I have not read this, but I do have it. It is in my collection, along well, that with uh, not winner Larry Niven's The Ring World Engineer. Mm-hmm. So I have those to read. Uh, C. J. Cherry. 
it's always it has a it has an H at the end. Okay. A sherry with an H. Okay. Uh, down below station. I haven't read this one. 1983, Isaac Asimov, Foundation Edge. I have read every. Fo- I have read the first three Foundation books. Okay. And this is the fourth. And those books are so dry. <laughs> it's just. But here I am. I'm ready to read it. Yeah, you're. All right. Back now in. we get to the 80s where I've read. 1984, David Brin, Star Tide Rising. So good. I Star- love it. Really. Star Tide Rising. Okay. It's about. Humans and dolphins in space. Okay. And they crash land on a water planet, and they got to repair. So good. Yeah. I love it. Okay. You, th- you think that sounds stupid to say humans and dolphins in space, but it's, it's great. <laughs> 1985. Echo, wait, is it about Echo the Dolphin? No, it's not about Echo the Dolphin. Not everything can <sighs> be about sorry, Echo the Dolphin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No one knows what that game's about. <laughs> 1985. Dolphins. Will- William Gibson's Neuromancer. I've read this. I didn't like it. But here's the thing. It's on my list of books to reread. Okay. Because I think I just missed out on something. All right. So I'm going to reread it. Do it. Uh, 1986. You know what? Neuromancer should end up on... It should be a Netflix miniseries. I don't know why it's not. Maybe it will be. 1986. Orson Scott card. One for Ender's Game. Oh, boy. Love it. Love that book. Yes. So good. And I respect your love of that book. 1987. Orson Scott card. One again for Speaker for the Dead. The Ooh. sequel to Ender's Game. Creepy. But so good. Yeah. It's great. I love it. And... It's very different. It's it's a sequel, but if you liked Ender's Game, uh-huh. none of what you liked is in Speaker for the Dead. But it's very good. Uh, 1988, David Brin won for The Uplift War. This is book three okay. in his, uh, his Uplift series. So the first the second book was Star Tide Rising. Mm-hmm. And so this is a sequel, Uplift okay. War. Didn't like it as much as uh, Star Tide Rising. But what are you going to do? I don't know. 1989, C.J. Cherry won again for Citine. I think... I have this in my collection, but you I do. haven't gotten to it yet. Okay. And then we're into the 90s. There you go. I'm very excited for the winter of 1990. Good. We'll Don't tell it. us now. We'll save but, it. Yeah. You got to hide that little... away. Okay. All right. Do you want to talk to the Grammys for a minute here? Hmm. Does any award bore you or confuse you more than the Grammys? Record of the year. <laughs> 1980. The Doobie Brothers. What a fool believes. Do, 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 no. Do, do, that's do, Jesus do, is just do, all right. Do, do, it's different. Do, do, oh, no. Do, now you went a totally different direction. Uh, 1981. Christopher Cross. Sailing. 1982. I'm sailing. Kim Carnes. Betty Davis Eyes. <gasps> I love that song. 83. He's got Betty Davis Eyes. Yeah. Toto and Rosanna. Rosanna. Yeah. 84. Michael Jackson and Beat It. Ooh. 85, Tina Turner, and What's Love Got to Do With It? What's Love Got to Do? 86, USA for Africa, We Are the World. We Are the World. 87, Steve Winwood's Higher Love. Oh, right. Uh, Shave me into higher love. (laughs) (laughs) 88, Paul Simon's Graceland. Uh, and 89 i that's a good album can, can you sing graceland first no i can't all, do it we gotta keep it going just sing graceland like africa i'll sing you can call me al da, 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 da. that's from okay. the album okay. graceland all right next one. all right uh and then finally bobby mcferrin for don't worry be happy oh i'm not gonna do that one well okay don't worry <laughs> <laughs> ready you're ready with that whistle yeah. good for you my friend. which one of us is playing robin williams uh, oh, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I don't, no, I don't want to do it. Oh, don't worry. Don't, <laughs> yeah. be happy. Don't, slow down. Don't, don't worry. Whistle with me. Whistle. All right. Watch. Should we, should we go out on Put the that pull, whistle down. <laughs> Pulitzer Prize for fiction? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, 1980, The Executioner's Song by Norman Mailer. Okay, so this is Pulitzer Prize, which we have also discovered, for like the Newberry Award. Some of these, some of these, yeah. A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Tool. that's Pulitzer, still pretty much Pulitzer Prize is there. a committee, right? This yeah. isn't like the Hugos where it's voted by right, readers. Right, Okay. Rabbit is Rich by John Updike. Nope. I always want to read these books, but I've, I've never read them. Failure. Color Purple by Alice Walker. Oh, yeah. Well, there they go. Iron Weed by William Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Foreign Affair, Affairs by Alison Lurie. Mm-hmm. Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. Oh, that's a very Big, popular Sweeping one, yeah. Western saga, yeah. Uh, Summons to Memphis, Pete Taylor. Beloved by Toni Morrison. Mm-mm. And Breathing Lessons by Ann Tyler. Huh. So, yeah. yep, that's it. Why don't I know Ann Tyler? She's still writing? Yes, she is. Okay. She just, a uh, spool of blue thread. She just came out. Uh, Vinegar Girl just okay. came out. We did one for Book Club. Patchwork All right, that's, that's yeah. why I recognize it. Yeah, right. she's still a big name, though. Okay. The 80s. Well, I like the 80s. That was a, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. I knew a lot more of these. Yeah. I thought I would do better I early on. I just spent on, this whole, got the 80s whole podcast in, in my, my sweet red leather jacket. Yeah, you did. With my 3D glasses yeah. on. And, yeah. yeah. I've got the full yeah. red leather bodysuit yeah. from Would Eddie Murphy's Would you like Murphy's some uh, new Coke? Lemonade. Oh, I do, yeah. So, good. Maybe I got some. some. Sure. Change yeah. the flavor. Yeah. Uh, so the 80s. Yeah. Elton Phillips, thank you for your help. Yeah, thank you for getting us Close back Close that time-traveling yeah. book. Roger, yeah. you can show them out. Yeah. Uh, Roger. 
He showed them something. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was... <laughs> It's really not professional, the things, <laughs> the things that he does. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Eric, for traveling with me to the 1980s. No problem, thank man. you to our listeners. But now for it's time for us 1980s. to go back yeah. to the future. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, how do we not talk about Back to the Future? It's like my favorite movie of all time. It wasn't up for any awards. No, it wasn't. The award I guess. Heart, I guess, okay, what favorite. is your favorite movie from the 80s? Back to the Future. There you go. Yeah, thank you. All, soundtrack's great. All the Huey Lewis stuff. Power of Love. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I don't know what my favorite movie from the 80s would be. Yeah. There's... There, there are a lot of good. That's when like sci-fi and uh, that's when sci-fi movies started getting really yeah. like kind of I don't know because they made them before and they were very like let's see how realistic we can make this like you know mm-hmm. Space Odyssey and mm-hmm. Alien and then the I mean Wrath of Khan came out. That's right. There you go. That's your that's my favorite Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, that is a great Star Trek. All yeah. right, well let's talk library news. We got our big event coming up uh, this coming Saturday, when? March fourth. You want to talk a little bit about this? We're doing the. Uh, Meet Kate meet reception. Kate. That's right. If you're listening and you're in town and you want to meet our new children's librarian yeah. of the David A. Howe Public Library, Kate Miller, yeah. you just come on to the David A. Howe Public Library <laughs> Saturday at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. One o'clock. Uh, friends of the library providing cake and punch. And cake Kate and will be punch. here so you can meet her. Yep. And then right after that, we have uh, Nate and Kate Kids Show Not downstairs. Different Kate. Different Kate. Kate. Miller, right. But this is it's a, a blend of music, juggling. I mean, they do a really great Political show. Political so satire. No, none of that. None of that. None. Okay. So we're really excited to have them. Yeah. So 1 o'clock on March 4th, come upstairs. Really, any time between 1 and 2, we'll be up there uh, so everybody gets a chance yeah. to meet Kate. And then you can come downstairs stairs yeah. see the show at two o'clock uh we're hey, excited maybe, about me. that so maybe meet eric i'm gonna be there yeah you got your after school movie coming up this friday yes yep. uh friday so what is that that's march 3rd, 3rd. yep oh, that's the same day logan's coming out yeah I know. listen that movie's rated r though so you can't take your kids to logan you so can't. instead bring them to the library and we're showing trolls yeah which was nominated for best, best original song, song. best song Justin, didn't get it which, which one's that that's the uh can't stop the feeling yeah that's exactly it okay there's yeah. a lot of singing in this episode yeah there very was. 80s there was um yeah we're showing that we're showing roman holiday for our senior citizen matinee holiday. that's the tuesday the 28th <laughs> at two o'clock so a lot oh, of fun man. stuff coming up yeah, our book and- clubs Book Club is right. originally was going to meet this week, but we had to move the Pelican Brief next week. So oh, it's still time. Yeah, three thirty on uh, March eighth. Yeah. We're going to meet for the Pelican Brief, uh, and then after that, we're doing moving on to Julia Spencer Fleming because mm-hmm. she's coming to visit March thirty first. Wow, I know. Yeah. You know, I know quick. some. Usually, you're like, "Oh, how can it already be March or something?" Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm glad. You ready for it this, to be March? This year's already felt very long. Yeah, it has. So agree, agree. I, yeah. All right. Anything you want to give a shout out to? Anime Club, Minecraft Anime Mondays. Club is Friday, uh, Wednesdays at five thirty. Yeah. I almost said Friday. Up in the new teen space. I'm sorry. The '80s really took their toll on me. I guess they did. I, I guess I haven't really stopped living in the '80s. Yeah, you have. So, okay. you want to go see the new Transformers movie this year? No. Please. No. I wish please. they would have stayed in the '80s. Please. Definitely. Sorry. That's Good thing right. we got spit guard. Yeah. Absolutely. My please was very. All right. Well, I think we close up shop. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna see you again next week. So tune in. What are we talking about next week? I think we're going to do a Lonely Hearts Book Club. Okay. In a while. So we're going to pull a treasure from the stacks. We do have a so, Lemony Snicket podcast Yeah, we're going to talk up. Lemony Snicket so that's probably, probably the two one weeks. after. Yeah. Yep, yep. Two and weeks. And then Lemony Snicket. we keep saying, who knows the next one? But then yeah. we, we had them pretty prepared. I know. So I know. let's it's get great. out of here. I'm tired. All right. The 80s really. All right. Thanks, for, thanks for traveling to the 80s. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.